So now, with these three new identities, what you're allowed to do with the ones that are on your formula sheet is not only use them in this form, and I'm going to take out my highlighter here, and I'd like you to as well, but sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 means these things as well. They all go together. I'll highlight all three of them in the same color. If sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, does it make sense that sine squared is 1 minus cos squared? And does it make sense that cos squared is 1 minus sine squared? If you can rearrange one of these in one step, you're allowed to use that directly in a proof. Sort of a rule of thumb in proofs. If you had to do two or three steps to rearrange things, and you do that in one step, they're going to say not enough work shown. But if one, it's only one step in an identity to move th something from one side to the other, it's going to be considered as fine. So for example, tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared. You could move the 1 over to the other side, no problem. You could move the tan squared over to the other side, no problem. But if you wrote negative 1 equals tan squared minus secant squared, you'd have to do more than one thing to do that. You'd have to move the secant squared over and the minus 1 over, then they would like to see at least one of those steps shown in your proof. And finally, 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant. Again, you could rearrange that. So these become new tools for us. We've got the basic ones that are on our formula sheet, any kind of one operation to move them around, and you're able to use that. So when we get to example 1, take out your scrap paper, try these proofs. Maybe you want to change things to sine and cosine, but whenever possible, if you can use one of these Pythagorean identities, it's going to make your proof shorter. So see how these ones work out. First one, cotangent theta plus tangent to theta equals cosecant theta, secant theta. Draw your line. This is a classic example of changing things to sine and cos. Because I look at my functions, and there is no squared, so I can't use any of those new formulas, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, or secant squared equals tan squared plus 1, etc. I also notice that there's nothing that I can change that will make everything in tan or everything in cotangent. So because of that, my first step that I'm going to do is to change everything to sine and cos. Cotangent is cos over sine. Tangent is sine over cos. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Secant is 1 over cos. And if I change everything to sine and cos, the next thing I'm going to do is say, can I write everything as a single fraction? Single fraction on the left-hand side, single fraction on the right-hand side. Well, the right-hand side is multiplying fractions. When you multiply fractions, you multiply your numerators, you multiply your denominators. So as a single fraction, the right-hand side is 1 over sine theta cos theta. On the left-hand side, I'm adding fractions. In order to add fractions, I need a common denominator. And so my common denominator here, well, this one's missing a cos, and this one's missing a sine. And so I would have a common denominator of sine theta times cos theta. And on the top, I will have, adding these, I have cos squared plus sine squared. So now I have succeeded in getting a single fraction on both sides, and they're not quite the same. But yes, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, that is one of our new identity. Well, it's an old identity. So you can change that to 1. And our left side is equal to our right side. Perfect. 
proof number one. Proof number two, based on the time that we have, you could change this one to sine and cos and get a single fraction on both sides. And you should do that proof, even though I'm going to show you a shorter way to do it. So your shorter way to do it. Draw my line. Okay? I'm looking at this. I'm noticing I have cotangent and I have cosecant squared. I know that cosecant squared is cotangent squared plus 1 as one of my formulas. So on the right hand side, where I have my cosecant squared, I'm going to substitute a cotangent squared plus 1. And the reason this is a nice strategy in this question is because with that substitution, everything is in cotangents. There's a good chance if everything's in cotangents that I'll be able to simplify and solve this. Can you see if you distribute this, you'll get cotangent cubed theta minus or plus cotangent theta, and then we have a minus cotangent theta. Well, those will just cancel out and you get cotangent cubed theta. And we're done. And the last one that we have here Again, draw our line down the middle. We have tan squared minus secant squared to the 4 equals negative tan squared minus secant squared. So everything is in tan squareds and secant squareds. This one in particular, if you change it to sine and cos, it's going to get messy really quickly. What a strategy you need to be able to see in this one, an advanced proving strategy, is to recognize a difference of squares. If you can factor something, usually it can help you. So in this case, the left-hand side, tan to the 4 minus secant to the 4, is a difference of squares. And I can factor it to be tan squared and tan squared, secant squared and secant squared, 1 plus, 1 minus. Now, in one of these, I'm going to fiddle. Now, this does take two steps, but if I look at my tan squared plus 1 equals secant squared, can I get tan squared minus secant squared or tan squared plus secant squared on the same side? Is it possible to rearrange that? to get tan squared minus secant squared on one side, or is it possible to rearrange that to get tan squared plus secant squared? Only one of them is possible. Which one? You can get minus secant squared, tan squared minus secant squared. So if I use that, this one here, I'm going to keep this one the same. And in this one, I'm going to change, <laughs> lucky, I'm going to change my secant squared is equal to tan squared plus 1. So I can substitute that in. Can you see what's going to happen in this second set of brackets? Tan squared minus tan squared is going to go away. When you distribute the negative, you get a negative 1. If I distribute that negative 1, so in parts B and C in this question, we get introduced 
to using our Pythagorean triplets of when we would want to substitute when you have something squared into an equation. And this part C introduces you to factoring differences squares, or reintroduces. You already knew how to factor differences squares, but how it can be helpful in an identity. Okay, the questions for practice on this one are 3, 5, 6, I, I, 7, I, I, and 9, I, I.